All right, I see people get tripped up on this quite a bit. You see, what we've got is a cart right here, which is sitting in equilibrium between two springs, one spring pulling it to the left, the other spring pulling it to the right. And the question is, if we force or cause this cart to move side to side, do we treat these two springs as though they're in series, or do we treat these two springs as though they're in parallel with one another? See, depending on whether we connect springs in series or parallel, there's different equations that govern the stiffness of the total or effective combined spring which is formed. And I've derived these equations in the past, if you want to see that done. Now, to understand why these two springs are in fact in parallel and not series, we need to take a look at a graph of the force versus position for each of these springs. You see, when this block is at equilibrium, one spring is pulling to the right, the other is pulling to the left. And since the block is in fact at equilibrium, that means those two forces must be equal in magnitude. So looking down here on our graph, at equilibrium, we have one spring acting to the right, I'm going to say that's positive, and the other spring acting to the left, so I'm going to say that's negative. But those two magnitudes are the same. But imagine what would happen if we were to take this block right here and push it, to the left. As the block is pushed to the left, this spring over here on the left side is actually going to get shorter. That is to say, it's not going to be pulling as hard, or it won't be stretched so far. So on our graph, we'll see as we move to the left, the force by the spring on the left is going to decrease. As we push this block to the left, this spring on the right is going to stretch, meaning the force produced by this spring is going to be larger. And we see the opposite thing if we're to move our block over here. The spring on the left is going to be stretched farther, and the spring on the right will, won't be stretched quite so far, so we won't see quite as large of a force. And if you look at the trend that's formed here, we have two lines, one for the force produced by each spring. And realize, these two springs don't have to have the same spring constant, meaning on our force versus position graph, these two lines don't have to have the same slope. But here's the key in the whole problem. The block doesn't know whether it's being pushed or pulled on by one spring or two. Ultimately, all it knows is there's some total or net force on the block. And that force is the sum of the two forces by the springs. Now, the hang-up that a lot of people run into here has to do with Hooke's Law, which you typically see as F is equal to negative Kx. But the problem in this situation is that this equation doesn't take into account the fact that each of these springs are initially stretched. You see, if we say equilibrium is a position of zero, then the force, according to Hooke's law, when the objects are at a position of zero, should in fact be zero. But we know each of these springs is producing some force either to the right or to the left. So we're going to change Hooke's law a little bit to say that the force by each spring is equal to the initial force, that is however hard the spring is initially pulling in any direction, minus kx, where k is the spring constant for that particular spring. And these equations are really nothing other than the equations of these lines on our graph. But we have to be a little bit careful here. You see, spring 1 was initially pulling to the left, or really we could say it had some initial force, whatever that force may be, that was negative, making this term right here a negative value. F2, on the other hand, was pulling to the right, making its initial force positive, just as we saw right here. Now, you may be tempted to want to flip one of the signs on these k values over here, but realize, on our force, versus position graph, both of these lines have negative slopes. Or going back to spring constants, on a force versus position graph, the slope of the line is nothing other than the k value, or spring constant. So putting these equations together, we get our total force is this term, but our initial forces cancel out, leaving us with this expression where we're ultimately just adding together our two spring constants, which is exactly what we saw up here in our equation for parallel spring combinations. Or if we go back to our graph, if we were to graph this function, we'd see a line that has a value of zero when at equilibrium, and has a slope that is the sum of the two slopes which we see from the other springs. 
So there it is, a proof that these two springs are in fact in parallel, not in series, even though they appear to be in a line with one another. So I hope you found this useful, and on that note, that's all for now.